Hi guys, so I'm here to do a currently reading video, so without further ado, let's have a wee chat about the books I'm currently reading. So the book I actually started most recently is actually a collection of poetry, and this is Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith. I picked this up in Gaze the Word, which is an independent bookshop here in London that you must, must check out if you're ever visiting or if you live here. It's fantastic, and I saw this on display. The title caught my eye because my friend Jen had been raving about it and saying that it was just a fantastic poetry collection so I knew that was a book I needed to pick up whilst I was in there. Sort of a bit of a birthday present to myself shall we say. And like I mentioned this is a collection of poetry so I'm about yeah, 31 pages in and there's 85 pages in so I'm not quite halfway yet but I have read um, a number of poems so far now. The themes that very much come through in this are things like race, um, race in the media, um, and also very much um, HIV. The the author of this book is HIV positive, and um, this 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 comes up life and death and um, come up again and again in these poems, as does sexuality and love and growing up. I feel like um, growing up is a theme that's very present in this book and just because um, it, it deals with themes of death um, and life I wouldn't say that this is like grief poetry which I feel like is quite a popular poetry genre. It doesn't read like grief poetry in any sense of the word. It's very visceral um, and one of the things I've found just reading this is kind of at the end of each of the poems I feel like I've been punched in the gut um, not in a bad way, I mean obviously that's quite an intense feeling, um, but it's a very intentional feeling um, that the book is trying to conjure up in you and I feel like I come away from each poem like, oh, that really struck me, that really hit me hard and um, because of that so far I'm thinking that these are pretty brilliant. Poet has published uh, poems other places but um, this is his debut collection so I'm pleased to see it's getting a little bit of attention. There was a podcast um, on the London uh, Review Bookshops Twitter that you can listen to if you're interested in, in the, the poet at all. And yeah, in terms of style I feel like the words blend in a little bit. I don't feel like there's really distinctive lines in a, in a pattern if that makes sense, um, if that's what you're looking for, it all kind of flows together and you just kind of read it and consume it all and he uses um, a, a small selection of words to create very vivid and um, impactful images in doing that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the rest of these. I've already read those first few um, in the space of a day so I'm definitely going to be finishing this one very soon. The next book I'm reading is a novel and it's a little outside of my comfort zone, it's a little bit different from my usual reading even though I think I'm quite a a varied reader. Um, and it's a Nick Hornby book. It's High Fidelity. Um, this is also being turned into a film, so you might have seen the film or seen the trailer for the film. And I don't want the word chiclet to sound bad because I don't, from my perspective, have negative connotations with chiclet. And when I was reading this, or as I am reading this, I am 60 pages in, it's about 250 pages. It just reads like what I think of as chiclet, but with more of a male bend to that, so it's not really chiclet. And I was actually talking about this with a couple of friends and one of them told me that there is a term for that and it is ladlet. So this is apparently ladlet, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. Um, but yeah, I'm giving Nick Hornby a shot and it's very quick, easy reading. I'm speeding through it um, and it quite you do get quite absorbed in it. One of the things I'm enjoying about it is that it's set in London, which you all know I love me a book set in London. The story itself, which I haven't even mentioned yet, is about it's about our main character who owns a record shop in London and he has just been broken up with, with by the woman that he lives with and this um, sort of sparks the beginning of the book where he is listing his previous breakups, his previous heartbreaks, the women that have broken his heart and uh, as part of processing this new breakup and he's telling um, his, his, his most recent breakup that she didn't have as big an impact on him as these other women did so she came too late in the breakup series but I think that's sort of from what I gather a bit of a coping mechanism more than anything else so he's sort of like at this point just being like you know I'm okay I'm fine I'm like pretty good this hasn't made a big 
difference to my life and I don't know if it's going to be more like, like he gets more affected by it as it goes, this is kind of, I don't know where it's going to go but in my head this is what's going to happen, that he's kind of pretending he's okay just now but I don't actually know to be fair, maybe he is totally okay with it and the novel doesn't really have anything else happening in it which would seem strange, <laughs> but I don't think so, so it's about this breakup um, and yeah it's about our main character and kind of everything going on in his head, he is not always the most likeable character but he's interesting enough and yeah I'm I'm reading it I'm not madly in love at the moment but nor do I hate it and I'm definitely going to finish it so yeah it's, it's nice to be trying something a little bit different and I'm glad I'm reading it I'd love to know if any of you have read Nick Hornby particularly if you think of similar reading tastes to me and um, whether you enjoyed it or not and um, one of the things I've liked so far is that one of the guys that works in the record store, not the guy that owns it, um, is a big fan of Terry Pratchett and then the guy that owns the record store um, is uh, one of his favourite books is Let's Your Guys Guide to the Galaxy. There's a lot of references to sort of pop culture um, and, and media and, and music obviously because they work in a record store and I quite like those little things. I think they help you connect to characters in a book especially if you like the same things or dislike the same things and um, so I quite like all that little dropping of things um, but yeah like I said I wouldn't necessarily say the main character is that likeable. Um, the book originally came out in 1995, so you know, classic lad lip. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, there's a book I already know how many stars I'm going to give it, because I've given it the same amount of stars a million times before, um, and that's five, because it is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Um, I'm not going to tell you what this book is about, you know what it is, it's the fourth in the Harry Potter series, and I'm listening to this one on audiobook. I was not really in the mood to pick up a new audiobook, even though I have a couple to listen to. I wanted to listen to something familiar, something comforting, and of course I went for Harry Potter. Uh, the Goblet of Fire is interesting because it was not one of my favourites in the series on my first reading. So when I read through the original seven, um, the first time for each um, as they came out, it was not one of my favourites. I didn't dislike it, but not one of my favourites. Over the years, though, it, over many rereads and re listens, it has become a favourite. It definitely, definitely has. I'd perhaps put it in my top three, in fact. I think my favourite is The Deathly Hallows though, but this is not the point, we're talking about The Goblet of Fire and I've just really grown to love that one so much as time's gone by and, and on rereads, I just feel like there's so much to it, I love re-listening to it. And something else I think is interesting is I've mentioned before, like a while ago, when I've been rereading Harry Potter books and I only ever talk about... Harry Potter rereads when I finish the books and when I'm planning on finish them. So I am at the point in the Deathly Hallows where we're about to take part in the third um, Triwizard Tournament task. I'm going to listen to it till the end. I'm really committed to listening to it from the beginning. But quite often when I'm listening to Harry Potter audiobooks, I don't listen to the whole thing. I'll sometimes just listen to a couple of hours at the beginning, a couple of hours in the middle, <laughs> what have you. Because I'm so familiar with the stories, I can almost talk along with them that it's like watching a random episode of one of my favourite TV shows. I don't need to start at the beginning and I really enjoy it and it's such a comfort to me. It's something I always do when I'm feeling sad or um, stressed or what, what may have you. It's something I go to and I don't always read them in order. So I don't go Philosopher's Stone to um, Deathly Hallows and something I've definitely done before is read like the Deathly Hallows, then read Chamber of Secrets, then read uh, The Goblet of Fire and talk about them on this channel in those order. People have been so disorientated by that reading pattern or reading habit. But that's just what I do. I just listen to them as and when I need them and when I fancy them and Goblet of Fire is one of my favourites. I Yeah, and I'm really, really enjoying this reread. It's um, giving me everything I want from it. It's lovely to be back in Hogwarts and it's nice to be reading and it's nice to be completely experiencing the story from beginning to end. So I thought I'd talk about in a currently reading video since I don't always talk about when I'm rereading Harry Potter even though I am most of the time. <laughs> I'd love to know if you do the same, listen to them out of order, read them out of order. Um, because you just you just so comfortable with them at this point. Um, but yeah, do let me know if you have any thoughts on the books I've mentioned in this video. I feel like it's such a mishmash of things and I don't know what I've really said about any of them. My brain's not functioning 100% at the moment, but um, I'm enjoying reading as always, thankfully. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this currently reading video. Apologies, I have lost my voice slightly. Not ill, just uh, lots of singing. <laughs> <laughs> over my birthday weekend um, <laughs> but until next time guys happy reading and I'll see you again soon bye